We have a treat for you today. We're talking about natural soap, and we have a professional here that's going to show us how to do that with natural ingredients. Hey, Provider Preppers, I'm Jonathan. I'm Ryan. And I'm Kylene. And today I'm super excited because we are here with Ryan from Barebone Naturals, and he makes soap. And for those of you who watch our shows, you'll know that I love to make my tinctures and salves and all kinds of herbal remedies, but I haven't made soap yet. And so Ryan's here to teach me how to do it like the professionals. All right, before we get started, Ryan, why don't you tell me a little bit about how you got started and your company and why you're making natural soap? Okay, uh, so by trade, we're originally electrical contractors and uh, over the last a few years, we've tried to diversify and uh, just get into different businesses to uh, create new revenue streams. Um, so we have uh, our electrical business and then we have a small herd of Wagyu cows and then this year we decided to uh, get into soap, try manufacturing. And so that's why we've got this setup here. That's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. And I am anxious to learn what he knows because this morning I actually showered with some of this soap and it was fantastic for shaving my legs. That's probably too much information, but you just gotta know, it's really good stuff. Okay, so what is the first thing that we need to do? So first thing we need to do is we need to measure out our oils. <clears throat> so we get our uh, bowl here. And tell me the, what does, purpose does the oil serve in it? Um, so the oils all have just different properties uh, and different uh, vitamins and minerals and stuff like that that help with the skin. Obviously, you are got your coconut oil and your olive oil, and then your beef tallow has probably the majority of the vitamins and minerals and uh, healing properties to help your skin heal and stay moisturized. And, and then, you know, we put shea butter and castor oil. And, so it's quite the combination. Yeah. Why did you come up with this combination of oils? Um, I don't know. I just kind of threw it together and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say we really came up with anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> what does that mean to me? What does that mean to me? That means that I'm okay. Like I can make this out of a bunch of different ingredients. And one of the things that's really important to us is that when times get hard and we might not be able to go to the store and buy soap, I have the ability to make it. So that kind of says that even if I don't have exactly what I would like to have, we can make soap out of things that we do have. For instance, the beef tallow, right? That's okay, right. That's right. tell us what we're doing. So we'll measure out our coconut oil here. <clears throat> you should show the coconut oil to them. Check out. Look like this. Big old, big old barrel. See that? <laughs> that is some impressive coconut oil. So we're going to put 21.6 ounces. And tell me about why we're measuring it that way instead of just by the cup. Because um, the recipe, the calculator I use, uh, it's called the soap calc. It's just the way it, when I put in the ingredients, it's the way it come out. So you can do it in grams, pounds, ounces, or grams. And I don't know, ounces just seem like the easiest way. Okay. To do it, so. Okay. So we'll get 21.6 ounces of this in there. Coconut oil is such good stuff for your skin, and actually, it's one of my favorite cooking oils. It doesn't have to be on the dock, but I try to get as close as I can. Did you hear that, Jonathan? It doesn't have to be on the dot, just close. <laughs> And then we'll uh, zero it out and we'll go to our olive oil. And that is also 21.6 ounces. And then for our other probably main ingredient here, probably one of the better ones, is our beef tallow that we put in there. So you want to show it to them? And this one we will do 18 ounces. 
every time between these, you're just tearing the scale, right? You're just setting it back yep, to zero. Putting so it back to zero, to so I can just measure it out again. No math. Check that out. <laughs> no math. And then we'll go to our shea butter. Okay, while he's doing this, I can't help but think, you know what, when he's done with these, these buckets would be great for food storage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I stave them all right down there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So with the shea butter, we're gonna do 7.2 ounces. So there's that. And then for the last ingredient for this batch is our castor oil, which we put in 3.6 ounces. I think it's amazing because right now it looks like an oily mess. Like if I were to put it on my skin, I'd be worse off after my shower than before. So I think it's really interesting how suddenly this is gonna change into something that will make us clean. Okay, now that that's all measured, step two. Now we gotta melt all the oils and so they combine. So we'll put them in here. And tell me what this heating unit is that you have that you're doing it on. This is just a, a just a cheap pot plate that I purchased uh, from the hardware store and this stainless steel pan and it seems to get the job done. So you don't have to go out and buy anything expensive. And it can also be done on your stove at home and so we'll clean that out. And then we try to get the oils up to uh, 160 degrees, just so all the butters and everything gets nice and melted and combines really well. And, and uh, then after it's 100 degrees, we turn the heat off, let it cool down to about 100 degrees. And then that's when we would mix everything together and put our lye solution in there. So right now I'm gonna, we're gonna do our lye solution. Okay, so we didn't wanna bring it to a boil, only to 160 degrees, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna let it cool down to 100 degrees mm -hmm. before we do anything else with it. Yep. Awesome. Okay, let's go to the lye. Okay, now the step two, we're gonna do create the lye. So tell me a little bit about what that is and why we wanna use lye. Okay, so what the lye does is the lye is what kind of is the chemical reaction. So once you get your solution all made up and you mix it with the oils and you stir it and uh, get your oils to trace, that's how the soap sets up and becomes an actual bar. So that's the that's why it's important to use the lye. Otherwise, it just be the oils. Okay. <laughs> okay. So how do we do this? So first, you get your distilled water. And we're gonna put that at 15.44 ounces. I think Jonathan would love this because there's an awful lot of measuring that's taking place. <laughs> and we use distilled water just because... Yeah, it doesn't have the minerals in it and so that minerals can react to the lye and the soaps differently and so. Okay. Uh, and then we'll grab our lye. Now tell me what exactly this lye is. Um, so if they, we were gonna go out to the store and buy it. Yeah, what? so you could get it at the hardware store. It's just uh, sodium hydroxide. Okay. So and just, just looking yeah, for just, yeah, that's all it is, just sodium hydroxide and that's where my aunt, she's like, she does, my aunt does goat milk soap okay. too. And so that's where she gets her. She gets hers at the hardware store. Now, if I remember from chemistry, this is a little bit dangerous. It is. You definitely don't want to get it on your skin. And when we pour it in the solution here, we'll put some safety glasses on just so you don't want to get it in your eyes either. We're going to put 10.29 ounces of this in there. Put my safety glasses on. 
I'll grab my whisk and you'll probably see the vapors of the lye. So you want to always pour the lye into the water, not the other way around or it'll just kind of bubble out and kind of have a little and explosion. And make a mess. Yeah. Okay. So. No explosions. That would be bad. <laughs> explosions bad. And you're just using stainless steel, stainless steel. and glass. Yep. And we'll just mix it. You don't want to breathe it in either. We'll mix it really well. Put this in here. And then I have my little measure thing here. And right now it's at 200 degrees. At 200 degrees. So, and the, how hot will it get? That's probably about max. So it's okay. probably, it'll start cooling down. It probably won't get much hotter than that. Okay. So, and our oils are almost up there. We'll let those heat up a little bit more. And then, yeah, once they get to temperature, you set them aside and then you go to your additives. So we're going to be making an amber wood moss scented soap today. So we'll amber wood moss scented soap. Hmm. We'll go do our additives now. Okay. So the third step is the additives. So tell us what you're going to do here. Yep. So here I'm going to add my goat milk. I got goat milk powder. So I put a third cup of goat milk powder in there. And then I'm going to put some kaolin clay and some Moroccan clay. I'm going to put two tablespoons of each. What purpose does the clay serve in the soap? The clay just add another, you know, it's kind of a exfoliant. Okay. But they also are, you know, a lot of clays are in your makeup products and your beauty products and stuff. So it just adds another level of fantasticness. Yeah. And it, and it also is how I get the color. So I use the clays instead of using uh, manufactured colors. I use the clays to get the certain color that I want. So the natural. Yeah, yeah, to keep it, keep the natural base going. And so what kind was this? Kaolin clay. Kaolin and this clay. was Moroccan clay. Okay. So now we're going to add a little bit of sand just for a little bit more exfoliant. I'm putting a table, a teaspoon and a half. Sand in my soap. That's interesting. And then we'll get our scent, which is amber wood moss. Nature's oil. Two fluid ounces. And there you go. Now everything, once the oils are cooled, you have everything measured out and you're ready to mix it all. All right, Ryan. So now is when the magic happens, right? That's and right. You've prepared some of this in advance because that other needs to cool, right? That's right. So, but these are, are right. So show us how we combine it and turn it into soap. Okay. So uh, this one is going to be your uh, charcoal Epsom salt. So I'm going to add my scent. And I'll add my, this has the same, same things, goat milk. Uh, this has bentonite clay and activated charcoal. We'll put that in there. And we'll just mix it in really good. Make sure that it's not clumpy. So I just mix that up really good just because I have that powdered goat milk and the clay and I don't want any clumps in there. So I want to break it all up and make sure it's Okay. And this is just smooth. a standard immersion blender. Yep. Yep. And I'll take my lye. Oh, now this, it's always the lye into the yep. other products. Yep. Okay. Slowly. How fast is this going to set up? It depends. Sometimes it takes a while. It takes a little bit, a couple minutes, and sometimes it does it really fast. So okay. <laughs> sometimes it could be uh, a little bit of a race. I haven't, I haven't perfected that yet. This is so cool. That. 
Oh, I do have my Epsom salt still, but after I mix it up, I'll mix that in separate just so the blender doesn't crush it all. Crush it all? Yep. Okay. <laughs> And then you try to get it to a trace. Talk to me about trace. What is trace? <clears throat> well, trace is when it gets to a point where it's starting to set up and you can, if you pull the blender out and you move it, you can, it kind of, it will sit on top instead of sinking down in. Okay. So see right now it's still kind of sinking down in, so I haven't quite got to trace yet. Okay, so we're about ready? Yep. I'll dump this in there. That's right, the Epsom salts are last so we don't crush them, right? Yep, yep. I'll stir that in real quick. So exciting. Should I move this over here? And then we'll take this and dump it in our mold. Now this mold, is, is it silicone? It's silicone, the inner part silicone, just in a wood frame. Probably to help it so that it will release it. Yeah, yep. Okay. It's easier to peel the silicone off of it. Wow, that's beautiful. That's so exciting. And then what we have left, I have just this little guy to finish off what's left. And that's it. So how long does it take for the soap to set up? About 24 hours. So, so you take, I'll leave that there for a few hours just cause it is still kind of runny, but then I'll take it in my office there and it will sit for 24 hours. And then we, we use this to cut it. I should have made one yesterday. So we had a loaf to cut. Well, that's pretty impressive. So you just, yep. <clears throat> go down. That is way cool. How often do you break your strings? I haven't broke one yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so then after you cut the bars, how long does it take to finally finish curing? Four weeks. Four weeks. So yeah, at least four weeks. And I noticed when you sell them, you sell them in the bags. They're not mm -hmm. wrapped in plastic. Mm -mm. So tell me a little bit about why you choose to do that. Well, we chose the bags because the goat milk and the plastic, they kind of have a reaction, gives kind of a weird... Interesting. Weird fill to the soap. So we just decided to do paper okay. bags. And so if I were to store these like longer term, maybe the best way to store them would be in the bags inside of another airtight container. Yeah. Okay, now I know how to store the soap. How long until I can use it? Probably at least two weeks, just so the lye sponified with the soap enough that it's not gonna burn you. So if I were to use this right now, it- It, it would burn you, yeah. The okay. lye would burn you. So at least two weeks. Uh, four weeks is better, because then all the moisture can get out of it and you can get a really hard bar. Uh huh. But yeah, after about two weeks, you can use the soap. All right, fantastic. Okay, I am so excited. So Ryan, review those steps with me again. Okay, so you have, you know, step one, you mix your oils. Step two, uh, then you heat your oils up. So you mix, put them in the heater. And then step two, you do the lye. As your oils are cooling, you can put your additives together and the additives can be whatever you want. And then you, once they get down to the temperature, I usually wait till they're about 100 degrees, both the lye solution and the oils. And then I mix them together and then I pour them in the mold. Okay, this is so much easier than I would have imagined, right? Like I totally feel empowered to do this. Now, John, let's talk about it from a prepper standpoint. Okay, so obviously if you're going to be able to do this, you want to have these things available, whatever it is. And, and you've talked about the possibility of just very simple ingredients. You don't have to have all of this. Nope, nope. You so, can do you can do 100% coconut oil. You can do 100% beef tallow. You can do, I mean, whatever oils you want. What I would recommend though is you go to the soap calculator and just so you get your lye solution the proper ratio because that's, that's kind of important your lye and mixture needs to be at the proper ratio and the different oils you put in it, it's different so i have two recipes and they're different lye mixtures 
Okay, and that's, you know, that's one of the things we need to store the light. Okay, it is possible to make lye from the wood ash and all that, but personally, we store it. it is it two pound bottles? Of yeah, we have two pound bottles. They store very safely. You do need to make sure that they're stored properly because they can be a little bit dangerous. But and what is it? Okay. What is it that we have? The sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide. Yeah. Big words sometimes are hard for me. Okay, we have the sodium hydroxide because we also use that when we make the soap for our Jodom um, pesticide solution, right? So that is what we've done because we do everything organically there. So we've got that stored. Now would be a good time to actually buy the soap molds or whatever you're going to make it in. I guess you don't have to have that, right? You can do some kind of homemade something, mm -hmm. which, but it would make it easier. So like for us, I want to get everything in place that I need. And I am kind of a fan of the smelly soaps, right? The natural smelly ones. And so I stock up on a few essential oils so that I can make them just smell just exactly the way I want them to. But Jonathan, he was just talking about how he wants a new tire smell or <laughs> lumber. You know, lumber, lumber, fresh lumber, lumber smell. <laughs> Oh, good stuff. <laughs> and that's so, kind of that's cool because the possibilities are endless. I'm not sure how much I'd want to snuggle in with the new tire smell, but you know. Yeah. So back to the to the molds. Uh, I think you said silicone would be the easiest just yeah. because it's flexible and it's you can... flexible. You can break out the soap easy. <clears throat> Let them set for 24 hours and then two weeks and you're good to go. Cool. And then, of course, from the guy that loves to measure a good scale. Uh, and these aren't really very expensive. Mm -hmm. You can get them out there very inexpensively. And I use it to make our bread, too. So um, a good scale. You just can't go wrong. Only one, or do you need a backup for well, your backup? I should probably have a couple of backups. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. He does love to measure things. Okay, thank you so much, Ryan. And for those of you who don't want to make your own soap, I'd encourage you to go visit their website. And Barebone Naturals will leave a link to it. And they... The, their supply is limited, right? Everything is made by hand, just like what you see him doing here. So if they don't happen to have it in stock when you want it, make sure that you reach out to them um, through the link that we'll provide. And I think you guys have it on Instagram too. Yep, What's your Instagram do. handle? Uh, Barebone Naturals. Barebone Naturals. Yep. Okay. And so reach out to them and see what incredible products they have because I think this is really important. And I love the fact that I have access to something that is natural and that's not going to add any chemicals or things that are going to be bad for my body. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for coming. And now for the question of the day, what's your favorite soap type, right? Do you like the really smelly ones? What kind? Of, I, I smelled a blackberry one and I thought that was amazing. Or do you like ones that like have the charcoal in it that are really good at cleaning your skin? Tell us if you could dream up any kind of homemade soap, what would it be? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.